Hi, this is Brother Richard. <clears throat> and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. And this will be part 293 in our series. <clears throat> our title for today's lesson is Destiny of the Prototokus Teachers. Where is it all leading? <clears throat> Scripture teaches at the gathering the Lord will make the Prototokus teachers instructors of all creations. Matthew 24 verse 45 to 47. This is a little turning. Yes sir. I may very briefly clarify. Matthew 24 48 to 51. 48 to 51? Yes. When talking about the evil servant who did not do what he knew he was supposed to do as a teacher. Mm -hmm. At the point of the graduation being the beginning of sorrows, mm -hmm. he would get his judgment, wouldn't he? Not at the beginning of sorrows, at the gathering. Mm. So during that period of time, and it may be years, who knows, does he have any chance of repent and going back and doing what he should have been doing. Every chance. Even though he didn't learn all the way up to the beginning of science. Well, the scripture gives, it gives a strong inference. He starts off making a decision. He mm. knows what he's been called to do. He's determined he's not going to do it. So from that time until the time of the gathering, he's going to be preserved. Because he goes, since he goes through mistreating his servants, eating and drinking with the drunken, he's doing that the day the Lord returns. Okay. But since <clears throat> he didn't receive these things, continue to study before the graduation period, you just said he made a decision, and he said, I've got time before my Lord comes. Mm -hmm. So this implies that he does not do what he's supposed to do for a, a reasonable period of time. He won't have the understanding. So how, if he does repent, could he still be a teacher? Yeah, he has the understanding. That's why he's called. Hmm. Two groups. The faithful and wise, he's got the understanding. Okay. He determines he's going to do it. This guy has the same understanding. He's determined he's not going to do it. Because they both go through the, trip, the, the, the testing period, mm. and they both reach the same point in which they are equals on the same level. One makes one decision, the other makes another decision. They're both called. God didn't call you unless you're ready to step in to do what he's called you to do. But if you didn't receive the fullness of his teaching, because at that point, he, he is the does, He does, he does, he does. They're equal. The difference, the difference is one's wise and one's foolish. So, am I understanding then that the decision he makes to not do it happens after the beginning of sorrows? Yes. Okay. Yes. That explains that, everything. That, that's what they're called. Right. And the sorrows, the beginning of sorrows starts. Mm -hmm. Then he says the wise servant whom his Lord has called okay. begins to do what he's okay. called to do. The other guy could do the same thing. He chooses not, not okay. to. Okay, that explains everything. Yeah. Your comment. So, we, <coughs> it's a very typical thing for you don't get off of the, your rump until you have to. Mm. So you don't get in motion until you have to. There, so if you're waiting around for things to get so bad <coughs> that you can't be comfortable, so now you're going to go ahead and do it. And that's... It's a, it's a sad story for those, the, the two guys that you're talking about right now, because see, one says he's going to do it, one says he's not going to do it, but the one that says he's going to do it, he waits around till the last second to start doing it. No, that's the one who's no. not going to do it. Okay. Yeah. Now, we're talking about the beginning of sorrows. We're talking about the teachers. They're ready. They're prepared. They've gone through the trials, both of them. But this eating and drinking with the drunken mm. puts them out of that category. Yeah, but for that's me. at the end. That's when he's doing what what he shouldn't be doing, and he knows what he's not doing. Right. We're talking about when it starts. He is asking a question about, well, how can he do it if he's not prepared to do it? I'm saying he is prepared to do it. Mm. He refuses to do it. Well, what's being said here is you have groups just like this that are going through their trials, right. just like we are. Right. The X, Y axis crosses at the beginning of sorrows. You have two the examples. One is going to make the right decision. Who is a faithful and wise servant 
who knows this is what he's called to do, and he in initially does it. The other guy knows that he's supposed to do the same thing. He refuses to do it. He wants to take the quick and easy path because he's profiting more by not doing it than he would if he did do it. Yeah. So they both know that they are going to be developing the life forms? Sure. They're prototokias. He's reached the point where he has been classified as a teacher. You're not talking about people with a secondary calling here. You're talking about people that the Lord says, I call them from eternity mm -hmm. for this part. Mm -hmm. And he gives two examples. You're going to have one where the guy is stepping into what he's called to do, gladly doing it. The other guy looks around and he sees it's more profitable for him to ingratiate himself. It gives the understanding that they are both going to be protected mm -hmm. until the Lord comes. You got everybody outside scrambling right. okay. and suffering, okay. but this guy is whining and dining. He's doing the stuff that is enjoyable. He isn't going through any grief. Gotcha. That makes sense. Then. The promise is to be counted worthy to escape all these things. Mm -hmm. Well, why is he accounted worthy to escape? Because he endured the time of testing. Gotcha. He reached the point where he got his, okay, you're prepared now, go forth and do what I've called you to do. So he's a graduate, in other words. Yes. He's graduated. See, I missed, yes. I missed the graduation part. I thought that he made the decision to run around with uh, the, the servants prior to him graduating. No, this is the period of time between <coughs> beginning of sorrows and, gathering. and the gathering. Yes. yes. It sounds like, like a kid waiting to graduate from his whatever grade he's in. He graduates, he gets a certificate, so now he can, he's running around with it, the certificate, because he's got a certificate saying that he's graduated. He, but he's now able to go beyond the human and into the, the eternal. But that's not even being accounted for. That's, just, that's him. All of the passes of the, that's, that's that mentality. They've got his certificate, right? He did his little course, his one certificate. You can't tell him anything anymore. He doesn't need to, to study. Yeah, but the big difference between them and this guy is that he doesn't value his certificate. Right. He's identifying with the drunken and with the core arousers, abusing his, uh, he has a position of authority, which he abuses. <clears throat> he is an individual that is under the Luciferian influence, mm. big time. Well, thank you for clarifying that. Amen. But let's go on. Okay, Matthew 24, 45 to 47. <coughs> this is it. <coughs> the culmination. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? That's his calling. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing. So between 45 to 46 is the period of the beginning of sorrows to the gathering. 46 is the gathering. The Lord comes to, and to take an account of what they're doing. <clears throat> Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. So the Lord, every time the Lord comes, he says, I come with a reward. Each individual group that is in vogue at the time of the Lord's coming is going to be rewarded or judged. <clears throat> the gathering, you're going to have some that are going to be rewarded. He says, to give every man according as his works shall be. Rewards, judgments. The rapture, the same thing. What's the reward? Adoption. What's the judgment? Tribulation period. Mm. Second coming. Rewards, judgments. It's no different. Every time he comes, this is what's going to be the case. Now, the rewards. What does it constitute? Scripture indicates <clears throat> the teacher at that point from the earth is raised to the position of angel over the 
churches. Revelation 1, verse 20. Before you get to verse 20, I want verse 16, Revelation 1. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. His countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. He had in his right hand seven stars. Now, drop down to verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Why is he pictured as having the stars in his right hand? Because the stars... Um the right hand is representing intimacy. Yes. Position of closeness. What does that mean? <coughs> that means they're his brethren. Hmm. Can't get much closer than that, except the bride position. So we should understand that the same brethren, for the most part, are the same disciples that we he met, you know, two thousand years ago. That's part of the group. Yeah. Plus, you know, us as a dish. Each group incarnates at a specific time of the Father's choosing. Mm -hmm. Now, the right hand gives us understanding. Remember what we said in that lesson. The Father gave them to him to develop. Mm -hmm. He kept saying that. Thine they were, now you give them me. They're in his right hand to develop. When they're developed, then they become the angels of the seven churches in verse 20. Yes. He says, of, of those that you gave me, I lost none save one, that he might fulfill the, the scripture. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that means we're already in, we're not, we're not going to be worried, we're, we're not, we have nothing to worry about? He's talking about the twelve. Only the twelve. If, only ones that have incarnated. Mm -hmm. You have to incarnate and be given him and then your destiny takes place. That's what happens in, Re in Matthew 24. <clears throat> They're developed. You have one group where they both pass the test. One chooses to be faithful. The other chooses to do his own thing. Each man in his own order. What does that start? It starts when you incarnate. When you take on flesh. That's when the te This is an arena for us to be tested. To see if we're going to qualify of the disciples, they all made it. But not every group of prototokens is everybody's going to be saved. We sure. just read that. So, can we, which I think is what you're saying, can we describe our generation of prototokens, us here right now, as in the right hand of the Lord to develop? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so from, from the point that he resurrected, Every single protagonist group, doesn't matter where they appear in time, is in his right hand to be developed. When they incarnate. When they incarnate, right. But uh, they're in his right hand and he is developing them. Turn to Hebrews, second chapter. Okay. Hebrews, chapter 2nd uh, chapter, verse 10. <clears throat> for became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many right. sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. So what's being said is when they're in heaven, they belong to the Father. They're around his throne. Mm. In order to qualify for the fullness of sonship, you have to take on flesh and blood. 
When you take on flesh and blood, the Father gives you to the hands of the Son to develop. He first overcame. So every son that incarnates overcomes the same way he overcame to qualify. Yes. Did the original 11 apostles have counterparts? Sure. Everybody is an eternal calling has a counterpart. You are part. Actually, you are. It's no different, but it's the fact that you are in a different reality designed to enable you to achieve a certain thing on behalf of yourself that's still around the throne. <clears throat> when the Prototokos becomes an angel, he enters into priority authority to begin to receive from the book of Revelation. He's already a custodian over it. His counterpart's custodian over it. Now he enters into being able to draw from it to be able to teach those he's been instructed to teach. <clears throat> All God's holdings. So we're talking about he enters into authority at this point to teach men, angels, and every intelligence in any part of the creation. We're going to take a look at that the perspective. Scripture teaches, <clears throat> These then come into custodianship of the Revelation book. This book was imparted to the angel's counterpart in eternity. Revelation 22, verse 9. Here, the angel is describing himself and his authority. <coughs> then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets, talking about his counterpart on earth. You notice the next is an and, it's a conjunction. And of them which keep the sayings of this book. The word keep there comes from a Greek term meaning to guard. The sayings, the word sayings there is logos. So they guard the logos of the Revelation book. The only ones that are given custodianship over the book. Because it came directly from the Father to the Son, directly to this angel who was part of the group that has unique custody over the revelation. That means that they are the sole repositors of revelation knowledge of every corner of the heaven, whether uh, permanent or temporary. They are the flow of revelation knowledge to every, and will be to every intelligence in God's creation. That's what he means when he says, I will make him ruler over all my goods, over all my possessions. When the Protodicus teachers <coughs> are teaching the creation, we understand that YHVH receives understanding and that all of the created angels will receive understanding. The question is, do the Protodicus teachers give it to the high-ranking angels and then they give it to others, or do the Protodicus give it to all angels at the same time? We're going to give you some examples of how it's going to be done. The Bible goes through some very interesting pictures of that. <clears throat> We're going to go down to the next principle. Scripture teaches, the Protodicus teachers will instruct all intelligences, whether in the heavens or earth, whether in time or in eternity, in the knowledge of the Father's master plan. They will use angels to convey revelation. So they're going to teach angels, angels are going to teach <coughs> others. Now, what we find here, you're going to have to understand something. You can't see this from a human perspective. I know that sounds mm -hmm. drone-ish. 
But to comprehend this, you have to understand something. Turn back to Revelation, first chapter. This is how you're going to teach. Revelation 1, verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. You're going to teach outside of time, space, duration. You're going to teach from a pluralistic perspective. You're going to teach past, you're going to teach present, you're going to teach future, you're going to teach eternal. I'll give you some examples. Turn to Daniel, 8th chapter, verse 13 to 19. <clears throat> Daniel's given revelation. Can't understand what it is. He needs clarification. <clears throat> Verse 13, Daniel 8. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint, which spake, How long? shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. Daniel is given a vignette, a view of the prototokist teacher teaching another that is going to become a repositor of revelation knowledge and pass it on. Daniel is in the past, looking into eternity. What he's looking at are individuals that haven't come into their position yet. That's you. He's looking at the prototokis angel over the church. So the question is, <coughs> is the first prototokis, does that, is that the point of where he stops his teaching? Since he's already given it to the next level. No. So he will continue to teach the creation? He continues, yes. Directly? Stop. Yes. Okay. Simultaneously. Yes, of course. This is plurality of existence. So Daniel sees this. <clears throat> this is unique. Because what it shows is you're going to function as God functions. You transcend beginning, you transcend ending. You can go to the end, the beginning, you can sort it out. You can go into the past. You can go into the future. You're not yet able to teach outside the creation. It's the only limitation you have. Okay. Everything else, you are covering everything dealing with the creation status. Mm -hmm. Yes? I know the answer to my question. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Tell us the answer then, the question. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. The answer is yes. Okay. okay. okay so now, no, Mr. Jones. I was going to I, I was gonna say... Who or will we be teaching during the eternal state? And of course, the answer is yes, of course, Smitty. How many times do I have to tell you? Mm -hmm. Now, the whole thing is, Mr. Jones, you see, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I, I bounce off what this man says. This man says this, and I, so I see this picture, and I'm saying, well, what about before, during, and after all that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, but I don't get to cut him off because then I, can't, I don't get to hear what you're saying. So, I'm, I'm thinking, will this scenario, you know, come across again? You know, will, will I have to, will I have to, will I be done teaching this guy and then he's going to pass on what I've just now taught him? Well, <coughs> in a manner of speaking, yeah, but the thing of it is, is it's going to be a never-ending story of compilation for you to give. And so, <laughs> there's no end. So, yeah, always, right. yes. yes, always. Yes, always. That's the answer, all right. Yes. Should we understand that all spiritual teaching 
at the counterpart level, I'm talking about Revelation 22, Revelation 19, is always done in the heaven of heavens? No. No. Because you have omnipotent omniscience. You're not limited to any particular region, area, time, location. Where the need to be taught arises, that's, that's where, where you you've... Even if, so, of course, <coughs> in the creation or... Yeah, exactly. Yes. So when Daniel is being taken, when John is being taken into eternity, I'm talking about, is that the heaven of heavens? Or do we not know? Uh, in Daniel's a particular point, what happened? A, a prophet, the Old Testament saint, can never be taken anywhere like the New Testament saint, but they're given visions. Okay. What Daniel saw, he saw the heaven of heavens. He sees the Father seated on his throne. He sees the Son at the time in which the Son receives the kingdom and is ready to return. He saw that in vision. He wasn't taken, but he comprehended okay. exactly what was happening. Yes. <clears throat> well, the Father... will a scenario in place to watch his sons take care of business. Will he will a scenario? Yeah. He doesn't have to. It's already done. So he's prepared. So he's already done it. It's already done. <laughs> Romans 8, 28 to 30. <clears throat> you will, when we <clears throat> enter into the position well, actually, let me read the scriptures to you. You can do a better job of explaining it than I can. <coughs> okay, I said you're going to see some examples. We're in Daniel 8, 13. I've done a verse 14. He said, He said unto me, Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now, <coughs> you get the picture here. There's a saint in the heaven of heavens talking to another saint about an event that's going to take place in time on the earth Daniel hears this and Daniel's looking up Daniel's trying to understand the vision that he's just given the teacher the teacher responds to the question from the saint not to the saint he responds to Daniel why? Because Daniel's the scribe. He has to put it all down so that those that are going to come in the next generation will understand it. The saint has omnipotence, omniscience, omnipresence. It's as though he's right there with Daniel. Daniel's in the past. Daniel died millennia before the saint received his position. But there's no space relationship here right. at all. Right. Yes. Did you just now say that Daniel is a scribe? Yes. He's a prophet. He's a recorder. He's a prophet. He's a scribe. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when he had the vision, what did he what did they tell him? He said, what is all he said, I don't I don't he said, don't worry about it. seal it up. Well what does that mean? Write it down and right. close the book. Right. That's where you, that's where you got the book. Daniel wrote the book. Mm -hmm. Just like John wrote his book. Subscribe. So from that, can we uh, understand that all Prototokos teachers are prophets in the same vein? All Prototokos, sure. Because we have this word. Spirit of yeah, right. Yes, yes, definitely. Yes. So Mr. Jones, it's been said at least one time by me in, you know, about 20 years ago, we are the unwritten epistles. Mm hmm But we will be writing our own epistles. No, you'll be speaking what needs to be heard. There's no scripture I see in the, in the Bible where it talks about... Well, yeah, no, i gotta, I got to rephrase that. i got to rephrase that. Yes, you will be writing. And I'll give you an example of that when we get to it. I see one example where that's going to take place. And when it does take place, it's epical it's all encompassing but let's go on verse 16 I heard a man's voice between the banks of Ulai which called and said Gabriel make this man understand the vision now what you have here is fascinating saints in heaven talking to another saint 
and talking to Daniel. And then the saint is right there on earth by the river Ulai talking to an angel. Why does he talk directly to Daniel? Because he's giving the angel everything that Daniel needs to know. This is an example of omnipotence, omnipresence. This is an individual <coughs> that has achieved uh, a state of um, probably uh, this is after the um, the rapture because he's glorified. He's entered into what Paul talks about, I will know as I am known. That'll be you. You, me. All those that make that position. Amen. Amen indeed. Let's go on. Verse 19. This is the angel Gabriel. And he, the angel Gabriel, said, Behold, I, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. So the angel has been thoroughly instructed by the saint about the things that are going to take place in the tribulation period. We understand that Gabriel and <coughs> Michael mm -hmm. are at that point, Daniel 10 I guess this is, the only two to have heard the revelation. Does that imparting of the revelation to them give them some form of favor or elevation in any way? Uh, to a certain degree, but it's limited. Because number one, the rest of the angels don't understand. They don't really understand. Okay. They're imparting. It's not for them. It's for the humans on the earth. So this is quoting it word for word, in other yeah. words, right? uh -huh. without comprehension. Yes. Mm. Because the angels don't have the Holy Spirit. Sure. Only the humans do. But let's go on. Scripture teaches, the Prototokos teaches, release or restrict the flow of revelation knowledge. Since they have access to the book, they can <coughs> release or they can restrict the knowledge that any other intelligence will ever receive. Let's see examples of that. Turn to Revelation 10, verse 4. John hears what he describes as seven thunders. And if you look up the definition of the word, it's exactly what it means. It means thunderous sound. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, so these are creatures, these are intelligences, they speak. I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. It's a prototokius. <coughs> Angelic intelligence is telling him not to release this information. Not to release the information at this point? Not to re release the information at all? Forever? Uh, you know, it's going to be released at a particular time but not at this time. The seven angel sounds, then it will be released. Now, <clears throat> Scripture indicates the teachers composed revelation knowledge and imparted to men and angels. In other words, you have the book of Revelation. They get the revelation and they can write the revelation separately to distribute it to individuals or groups commensurate with whatever the need for distributing is 
verse 1 and 2, Revelation 10. I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, called with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. This is the dawn star. I believe this is the dawn star. White fish. <coughs> fish. The creator of humanity, the human race on the earth, the God of the Old Testament, the giver of the law, the one that parts the Red Sea, the one that Israel is worshiping as Elyon. This is that individual. You will note how subservient he is to the Prototokos teachers as we go on. And he had in his hand a little book open. What does that mean? That means he's reading instruction. He's reading revelation out of this little book, instructing him as to what to do and what to say. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders under their voices. So he's reading the book. It's open in his hand, and it tells him, set your foot here, set your foot there, make this proclamation. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. He isn't doing it a priori because he already knows. He's doing it because he's instructed to do it from the book in his hand. So uh, uh, all important for us to understand that. Where did the book come from? It's written by the Prototokos out of the book of Revelation for the angel and for John for a specific time, a specific purpose. <clears throat> Note what he goes on to say. Drop down to verses 9 to 11. <coughs> and I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. It shall make thy belly bitter but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Why does he tell him to eat the, eat the book up? Because the, he is supposed to ingest the contents. Why? Because he's got to get knowledge of what the book is relating. <clears throat> Unlike the angel, he's not reading it. He's feeding off of it. This is a eternal book or the eternal book of Revelation? No. It is a writing from the book of Revelation. Mm. It's not eternal because he eats it up. What's eternal is what's written in it. The book of Revelation is eternal. It will mm. always be a book under the custody of the Prototokos angels. Mm. And there will be no eating it. <laughs> no. But in his situation of eating it, it would be like food and drink to him. That's what it is. Yeah. It tells us the word we you feed somebody. Mm -hmm. He's feeding the, off the word. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's got to gain the understanding of the word so he can pronounce the word. This is a calling of a prophet. Notice what the angel tells him. Verse 10, I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy, prophesy, prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. <clears throat> what is he going to prophesy? Things in the tribulation period. What is he going to prophesy? The things contained in the book. Why? Because the people he's going to prophesy to are going to take it and they're going to pass it on. And in that respect, <clears throat> he's being given a high calling to take place after he goes back to earth. But we find that he also understands things that are going to take place in the heavens to the degree to which he understands the word that was given to him in the book that he ate. I'll give you an example. Drop down, verse 11, chapter 11, verse 1. He has given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, measure the temple of God, 
and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without, the temple leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. How does he know that? Because he read it in the book. <clears throat> the book instructed him to do and to say everything he says and does. Give John, the voice tells John, take the book, eat the book. The instruction in the book said to tell John, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And he goes on to understand things that are going to pertain to him that he got out of the book. Verse 13. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. As you know, he got it out of the book. He is... <coughs> Understanding his part in the tribulation period. It revolves, revolves around the temple. Same temple that the beast is going to pull out from under his control by asserting himself as authority over it. He's being shown the destiny of things that are going to happen. Now... <coughs> What happens? <clears throat> he talks about verse 3. That's the last thing he has to say. John picks it up from there. John describes who the two witnesses are. John describes the events that are going to take place. How does he know? Because he just ate the book. And he's giving comprehension of what is written in the book. These are the two olive trees and two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Now, if this was YHVH talking, <clears throat> he would say, standing before me, because he's the God of the earth. It's John describing who the two witnesses are and what they're going to do. Why? Because he read the book. The angel doesn't know. He only read a part of the book. John read the whole thing and gave to its conclusion. So he's going to take on now the prophet. Remember what James just said, you've got to prophesy between many people and tongues and nations. This is what he's doing. Verse 5, And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will kill them, will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven in, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, the power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, shall overcome them and kill them. Their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. After three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into, you notice this is coached in the past, entered into them and they stood on their feet a great fear fell upon them which saw them. They heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they sent it up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. The same hour there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake of Yethrik was slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were frightened and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh. I want you to notice what we just read in verse 14. The second woe is past. The third woe cometh. Now, <clears throat> what is he talking about? Well, he's gained knowledge from the book about three woes. He didn't understand fully until he ate the book. 
Turn to chapter 8. Revelation. Revelation 8, verse 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. He doesn't know what's taking place here. He knows what he is the angel saying. That's what he's recorded. He records the two woes. And then... He goes on in chapter 11 to comprehend in verse 14 the second woe is past and behold the third woe cometh quickly. Why does he know? Because he ate the book. Re recount for us please the, two, the first two woes. What are they? <clears throat> Go back to verse 8. First woe is starts in chapter nine. You have the locust creatures. First woe. Excuse me, which which uh, chapter are we in? Chapter nine. Starting in verse one, the angel okay. sounded, I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, the end was given the key to the bottom of his pit, he opens the pit, locusts come out. That's <coughs> the first woe. Second woe. Are the horses. Verse eight, uh, verse 13. Six angels sounded. I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the six angels, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. The four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. That's the second woe. Then. <clears throat> then you have this interlude, chapter 10, where White Ridge comes down, has the book, makes a pronouncement. <clears throat> the book is given to John. John eats the book, gets the revelation knowledge, understanding, and then makes a pronouncement in verse 14. The second woe was passed. What was the second woe? The horses that were released and wiped out a third of the human race. What's the first woe? The locusts that were brought up and tormented men for five months or seven months or whatever it is. Second woe is passed and behold the third woe cometh quickly. John understands about the woes because he ate the Revelation book. Yes. Does YHVH know what's in the Revelation book? No. Yes. All he knows is what he read. So what's the third one? What you're going to read? Uh, third one has, has to do with... Um, <coughs> Judgments. <clears throat> the war in heaven, <clears throat> the persecution of the devil being released to wipe out stuff on the earth after the war in heaven, and then the judgments fall after that. So you could say Revelation 12 7. Yes. Woe unto the earth and the inhabitants. That's the beginning of the third one. That's <clears throat> the beginning of the third one. Okay. <coughs> which John understood all of this all of it comes from the angels who have access to the revelation book hmm. turn to Revelation 22 
verse 10. And he, the angel, saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. All through the Old Testament, they're told, seal it up, seal it up. It's not for this time. So the revelators are the ones, when they get the authority, they are going to release revelation knowledge according to the move of the Holy Spirit in releasing what needs to be released, when it needs to be released, to whom it needs to be released. Tremendous responsibility. Because what it's saying is certain individuals need to know certain things at certain times. Others don't. Others need a different type of revelation comprehension. <clears throat> when, turn to uh, Revelation 2nd chapter, verse 26. Twenty-six and twenty-seven. <clears throat> he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power, authority over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my Father. So the nations are going to be broken. After they're broken, they have to be taught. Who's going to teach them? Not the kings, the priests. And they're going to be needing specific revelation, not just across the broad revelation, specific revelation pertaining to them. Is the implication that different kings will need different perspectives? The people they're ruling over will need the perspectives. The kings can't give it to them. They can only bring them to a point where they're willing to receive. Then the priest steps in, the teacher steps okay. in, and gives him what he needs at that point. Others are going to stiff neck and say, I'm not going to take it, I don't want it, and suffer the consequences. Very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. Thanks the Lord. The consequences immediate. That's right. God's not going to brook any intransigence then the way he does now. Uh, the, these intelligences are not going to be able to have the privileges of uh, folding your hands and denying and uh, becoming intransigent. You're either going to bend or you're going to be broken. broken right. So at that time, will all of the Luciferian hordes know that, listen, things have changed? Most definitely. Now is not the time to be... You know, Most definitely, connected. yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, they're going to see the judgments that fall, and that those judgments aren't going to be uh, handled with kid gloves. Yeah. <clears throat> but what we find, an integral part of all this is the teachers. Open the creations. And this is just a preliminary, this is just a beginning. As the creation becomes instructed and greater and greater understanding, it says that the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Who's going to bring all that knowledge? Turn to Isaiah, Isaiah 30, verses 20 to 21. We'll be closing with this. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers 
be removed into a corner anymore. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Remember what we read in Daniel, the 8th chapter. Daniel hears a voice by the river Ulai, making a command. Gabriel, come here and give this man the instruction. So the teacher is going to be anywhere and everywhere. Knowing what each individual is going to do or what he's not going to do before he does it. Instructing him what needs to be done. The knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the water covers the sea. You're not going to have this, this stuff where people are going to inject their own view of the teaching like they did with Paul and come in and bring false doctrine and all the rest of that. You're going to know truth. It's going to be from one end of the earth to the other. God's word is going to be known and understood and totally comprehended by everybody. Amen. You're going to be responsible for the ones who do it. Amen indeed. <clears throat> this is a position that is open to the one who feels that they really want it. Yep. This is a position of promise from the Father, whosoever will can pursue it. It's made in such a way that it's not complicated. It's not something mysterious. It is a position that God has made available to the whole human race if they choose to pursue it. Yes, there's sacrifice involved. Yes, there's things that must be given up to receive it. <clears throat> but it's pretty plain that the rewards of pursuing it outweigh the trials that you have to endure to get it. It's pretty plain that there's no activities in this life that I can see that could compare to what God is offering the individual that wants it. So I rest my case here. Here it is. If you want it, it's yours. It's waiting. The time is short, matter of fact. But when you take a look at the tremendous glory that awaits the individual who appropriates this, it goes without saying. Mind-boggling. Yes. What keeps going through my mind is, come one, come all. Mm. It's not one position we're talking about. It's many positions for as many as will desire it. Yes, that's right. That we're going to experience. What you experience now, you can't give this hardly to anybody. Because of the intransigence of this reality, this Luciferian influence. Organized religion will not accept this. The leadership will reject it outright. The individuals whose minds have been so programmed by the Luciferians won't receive it. But at the beginning of sorrows, from the beginning of sorrows to the time of the gathering, the truth of this is going to go forth to the whole world and nobody is going to be able to stop it or deny it. And God's turning this, going to turn this thing all around. And we have an opportunity at this point to be partakers of that. To me, that's fantastic. 